Hello everyone, my name is Vladimir, welcome back to the Architecture Weekly YouTube channel. And today we're gonna talk about how to write a good user story. But why the user stories in the first place? Well, first of all, user stories is an essential part of the software development lifecycle process. And you, as an architect, you kinda want to optimize this process to ship more value. Another point is this is just a better way of looking at what you're doing from the user perspectives. But don't think that user stories is something that was always been in the industry. We used to write 500 pages long documents with the product specifications. Then we were developing software for a year and then just throw it out because it was not relevant anymore and didn't bring any value to the end user. So 20 years ago, the, we decided that we want to go agile and announce this agile manifesto. And part of those manifesto was like the users first bring value as fast as possible. So we decided we want to iterate in a very small portions and this requirements thing transformed from long documents into the short stories that we're describing what we want to bring as a value to our users. So a typical user story would look like this, like as a rider, I want to order a taxi so that I can get from point A to point B. This is a description of the user story, right? So this short form. And this form contains of three important parts. First of all is uh, as a rider. So you explicitly mentioned there what type of the user you're working with, right? So please don't ever write down the damn as a user thing. I will find you and I will hurt you. Instead, think precisely what type of the user you're dealing with. So for example, for the food delivery, your user is an eater. For the ride hailing, your user is a rider. For, I don't know, a banking application, you might be a customer, but that's not the best way, but maybe physical customer or regular customer because in bank you have, you know, business customers as well. So first of all, you need to pick up the type of the user that you are working with. Next, what you want to indicate is what they want to do. So as a rider, I want to order a taxi, right? I want to something to happen so that I can get some value out of it. That's why we have the third part that is responding to the why they want to do that. And in our case, it's so that I can get from a point A to point B. And this part clearly indicates value of the user story to the user. What is the problem with the user story? The problem here is that it is too damn big. So you won't be able to implement it in a short amount of time. And we mentioned in the beginning of the video that uh, we actually want it to be something small and not a dumb year of the development time. What we actually want to do, we want to have some small part of it formulated as a user story as well, and then work on it so that we can accomplish it, I don't know, in a week of time. So a better example of the user story would be, as a writer, I want to see my location in the mobile application, for example, so that I can be sure that taxi will be able to pick me up. This is a very narrow thing. It is much, much smaller and it's probably is implementable from scratch in a week of time, because uh, if you want to just show the location of the user, then you need a mobile application, you need to display a map on it and pinpoint the location and probably ask for the permission on the mobile device. Well, that's totally doable in a week, so it's small enough. And you want to make this for all of your stories. So in order to iterate, if you describe something big and long, like, I want to order a taxi so that I can get from one point to another. That's probably more like an epic or a big feature that you're working on. And you need to split it down into the small parts and those small parts would be your user stories. But how do you come up with the quality of the user story? There's an abbreviature called invest. You can see it here. Those letters indicate that the user stories should be independent, negotiable, valuable, estimatable, small, and testable. Let's go over them one by one. First is the independent property of the user story. That means that you can work on this user story independently of external, internal, or other dependencies. That means 
that you can just go and implement it. If you're working on this user story about showing the user location on the map, you need to make sure that you already have your mobile application. You know where the screen is where you, you would uh, display the location and then yeah, sure, you can start working on this, right? You have the uh, Google map key figured out, so you don't have any other dependencies. We will talk about uh, how to resolve those dependencies in other videos, but make sure that your user story is independable and you're ready to work on it without any technical dependencies whatsoever. Okay, next thing is negotiable. And at this point, you need to understand that uh, you're as a developer or an architect, you're in a constant negotiation with the product managers about what exactly you want to do or some little details about how this will be implemented. For example, the questions you might ask, like how do we want to uh, present this location of the user on the map? Will it be a standard pinpoint or it will be a customized one? How much time should pass before opening the screen and displaying the location of the user? How precise should it be? And so on and so on. So you should be able to negotiate those details with the PM. Next thing, the user story should be valuable. So it should actually really bring the value to the user. And this value should be understandable to everybody, including product managers, engineering managers, developers, uh, QA specialists, if you have ones and so on. So. If it doesn't bring any value, it doesn't make sense to work on this user story. Next one is estimatable. I already highlighted that the user story should be small so that you can feel it in a week of work, for example, and that you can actually understand the size of the work that you're going to spend there. Requirement is very important because first of all, you, it forces you to do a lot of prepare work like technical work, understanding the dependencies, resolving those dependencies. If you're working with a new technology, uh, it includes doing the proof of concept beforehand so that you can understand what you're actually working with and so on and so on. Once you have all of these results, then you should be able to say like, hey, this is a small bit of work or maybe this is a huge chunk of work. And you can use whatever methodology of estimation there is out there. You can use uh, t-shirt size, you can use story points. The most important point that is that you can relatively understand what's the size of it. Like doesn't matter how many hours uh, you will spend on it, but like the relative size compared to other user story. But we'll speak about estimations in other videos as well, especially if you would go and subscribe on my Patreon and Boosty so that I can improve the channel with new content, okay? Okay, the next one is small and this is kind of connected to the previous one because uh, not only we want uh, the story be estimatable, but we also want to mandate that it is small. So when you figure out that the user story is damn big, then you don't start working on that, you will divide it into other user stories so that those ones are actually small. And if they don't, you break down them further and further until you really understand that this bit is very small and very manageable in a short period of time. Okay, and the last one is testable. So if you cannot test the user story, right? The, uh, then you're not actually understanding what are you doing and probably the user story doesn't make any sense to the user at the same time. So you really want to understand how you're going to test it, right? So are you going to do that manually or are you going to write a bunch of unit and integration tests to, to test it properly, etc, etc. So make sure that the user story is testable and there's actually a way that other people other than you can really go through some list of criteria and say, hey, it really works as we intended it to work. Or there's a problem here and the problem is very clear. For example, I don't know, the understanding the location of the user takes 30 seconds instead of five seconds as we intended. So yeah, make sure it is testable. If you fill in all of those requirements, then you will have a good user story. By the side of the explanation of the story and, and, and those properties like invest properties that we talked about, we really want uh, the user story to have some other parts so that it is more clear that what we actually doing. For each user story, you will probably want to, uh, to write the prerequisites. So what is the state or, or situation that user is in so that your, your user story is relevant? Right. So, for example, if uh, we're talking about this location thing, that probably the prerequisite would be that the user is opened the application at, at least. Okay. 
Uh, then the next part uh, is the acceptance criteria. And that's the whole new talk. So the acceptance criteria are the criteria that you understand that the user story is actually completed and brings value to the user. So for example, for this location story, we might formulate the following acceptance criteria. The Google map is presented in the application that we're working with. The user location is pinpointed with a standard pin of this library, Google Maps library. Location is precise to a matter of five meters, let's say, okay? If the GPS signal is off, then we display a short dialogue asking the user for enabling it. And the last one is like when we press OK on the dialogue, then the settings are opened. Those will make the acceptance criteria for this user story testable and understandable, right? And this, uh, those acceptance criteria depicts the scope that we're working with so that the developer clearly understands what should be done, if the permission check should be implemented, what uh, should happen if the appropriate permission is not set for the application, etc, etc. Right? So the goal of the user story is depict the value for the user that we're adding to the application and explain how this value should be delivered. I hope that this video helped you writing better user stories. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to put them down below under the video. I will be happy answering them. See you next time.